Hello everyone, welcome to part 5 of our Trek Loan tutorial. In this session, we will use Firebase to implement the functionality to post a thread message. If you haven't watched the previous 4 part series of this tutorial, where we built all the screens from login, sign up, feed, explore, thread post, favorite, and also the profile screen, as well as authenticating the user with Firebase, I've linked them down in the description below so you can check them out first. So, with that said, let's get started. So the test button over here is going to handle the functionality in posting the thread message, right? And also the test form for the here will be taking the controller, right? For handling the user's input. So I'll start by creating a variable controller over here. So for now, the variable name is going to be the message controller. And that's going to be a test editing controller. So once we have that, we can pass the message controller to the test form for Right, so with the controller argument, you can pass in the message controller. There you go. So let's proceed to handle the thread post message as well, right? So I'll be creating the function over here. That's going to be future of type void. And the function name is going to be post thread message. It's going to be an asynchronous as well, right? So within the function, I'm going to have try and catch block, right? The trial is going to handle the successful execution of a posting of our thread and within the catch block you handle the errors so first of all let's check if our message controller.test is not empty right we don't want to post an empty message so if our message controller.test is not empty we await then we use our firebase firestore.instance.collection right so in here, the collection name is going to be threads. So firebase.instant.collection of threads. Then we add, we test in an object, right? So what are the things we want to save in here, right? First of all, we are going to save in the ID over here. And the ID will be coming from our current user. So let's bring in our current user over here. And that's going to be final current user. So we can access our current user from our Firebase auth dot instance dot current user. There we go. We can then pass in our current user dot uid. Let's check for the now over here. We also want to save the field of the sender, right? So we need the sender name. So I also create a variable to hold the sender name over here. That's going to be of type string. The variable name is going to be the username. So initially it's going to be an empty string. Then you can pass the username to the sender. And also the actual message as well, right? So the actual message you can assess it from our message controller.test. And also lastly the timestamp. So the timestamp is going to be from our field value. Dot server timestamp. There you go. So that's basically it. If you have successful um posting of this message, you can just proceed by clearing the message controller clearing the message controller right and also dispose of our panel controller so widget dot panel controller dot close so within our cache block we can we throw over here we throw the error over here there you go so the user name would wouldn't be an empty string right so We'll be creating a function that will get us the username that's going to be of type future so the function name is going to be get current username so that's basically going to loop through our users collection and retrieve the name so that we can just update the username over here right so within that we're going to have try and catch block over here so within the try block we'll be creating a variable of user documents 
then we await moving to our firebase firestore dot instant dot collection this time i'll move into the collection of our users we move into the users collection dot doc then we need to pass in the current user id dot get right so this will basically get as our users document so within the user doc we can assess the name and also the username right so the next step is where we assess the username so if mounted we are going to set state and update our username which initially is an empty string over there so in setting the state we update the username over here so we later want to assign the username to be our user doc then we assess the name field there you go and, and as usual within the catch block we can just withdraw the error so let's proceed so we can just within an init state right that's where we are going to call the get current username function so once the app runs that's the first thing that's it will do by getting us the current username right so we need to pass in the get current username now we'll update the username over there. So let's update the name over here, right? It's not always going to be Corey Dakwa. So first of all, let's pass in our post trade message function to the button over here, right? And now handle our functionality in posting the trade. For now, let's maintain this username since we don't have the users profile pick within there firebase right so let's update the username by passing the username as you can see you can see it gets updated over there everything is successful <coughs> let's start our test form for right so with the star attribute you can provide a test star so let's reduce the font size a bit so with the font size let's provide it a value of 14 let's save any changes there we go. That looks cool. I think that's pretty much it. We can just proceed to push a message, right? So this is my first message. Or oh, this is my first post, right? So post. There we go. We wouldn't see that yet, right? So when we move it into our collection over here and reload, we can see we have a new collection, right? Known as the trace. So we move into the trace collection. You can access the ID over here, the message, the sender, and also the timestamp. How cool is that? So let's try one more. It works here. So post. There you go. You can see we have another one being added over here, right? So let's retrieve um our data from our Firebase, right? So that's the next step. So we didn't have free screen that's what we're going to to be doing so in here we need to bring in our thread collection right so and that's going to be from our collection reference and the variable name is going to be our thread collection so we can access that from our firebase firestore right that's our database so firebase that firestore dot instance dot collection they will move into our thread collection so this will get address for us so let's wrap the list view builder within um a stream builder right so the stream comes with the stream and also the builder the stream is going to listen to a function that's where you provide it our thread collection the snapshot right that will get as a copy of that and also the builder comes with the context and also the snapshot so in here let's check for the state of the snapshot if snapshot dot has data or if snapshot dot connection state is equal to connection state dot waiting right so if it's in waiting mode we can actually return a circular progress indicator right so let's enter that right and the chart of the center is going to be a circular progress indicator else if our snapshot dot has error we also want to display that 
So if our snapshot dot has error, you'll be doing something similar by returning a center widget with a chart of a test displaying the error. There you go. So the default case, you can just get our message messages from our snapshot data, right? So snapshot.data get us the data. So snapshot.data.docs. Let's provide another check over there. So within the item builder of here, we can just extract our message data from our messages looping through its index so first of all let's create an instance of our message right and that's going to return a thread message for now let's comment out the likes the retweets and also the count over here right we'll be implementing that sooner so i'll also be commenting on these examples right so we'll be having only the id the sender name the profile and the message so here you can just refer to that. So with the ID, you can just um first of all let's create um the message data, right? You can just get the message data from our messages. Then we will look we will we will look through our index, right? So messages of its index dot data. And that's going to be of map of string and dynamic so once we have our message data we can just pass in our message data over here then we assess the id field we're doing something similar with the sender name we are set our sender and also our sender profile image url for now we don't have that in our firebase yet right our database so we can just use a constant image from our assets folder so the message is going to be from our message data then we assess the message field so with a timestamp um let's check for some state over here right so i'll create a variable of a timestamp so initially we are going to assign a date time of now yeah so in here let's check um the state of our timestamp, right? So if our message data don't contain the timestamp, and also if our message data of that timestamp is not equal to now, then we can proceed to update our timestamp variable. So we can update our timestamp variable so we can set our timestamp to be our message data then we assess our timestamp over here and that's going to be as timestamp then we convert it to a date there we go so we can just pass in our timestamp to the timestamp over here there we go so in here we just will be returning the message instance and the item count is going to be from our messages length, right? So let's change that. And let's save in the changes. There you go. Oops. The error is coming from trying to retrieve our image, right? Oh, my bad. The error is actually coming from, I didn't spell the asset, right? So there's S. So let's hold to restart. There you go. You can see our two messages. Let's try it one more. So can subscribe if you find it to be useful post yeah you can see just now subscribe if you find this to be useful how cool is that so let's proceed with our profile screen and update the necessary stuff over here right <coughs> so within our screen you'll be doing something similar right you want the current username right 
so i'll just grab that and within our profile screen i'll just paste that in here bring in our fire store you also need a current user as well and also the username over here right so i'll just grab them over here import our firebase authentication i'll be creating one variable as well and that's going to get us our full name so initially there's going to be an empty string over here and let's rename this function to fetch user data right we'll be fetching the username and the full name as well so you can update the full name field right by assessing the name within a user doc there we go so let's in here let's proceed to create a function right that will fetch us our thread messages and this thread message is going to be for only the current user right so it's going to be um a stream of list of thread messages and we are going to name this function as fetch is address So within that, um, we can actually return address collection, right? So we move into our Firebase collection of address. Then we filter where the sender is equal to the full name, right? So we can just get the address that's related to only the current user. So if our sender is equal to the full name. the snapshots then we look through right we are going to get an individual snapshot over here and for each snapshot you can actually return um a snapshot and also look through so snapshot.docs.map we get a single document over here And can just create um a message data variable to assess the data that's going to be from our doc dot data and also our timestamp is going to be from our message data then we assess the timestamp field over here then we convert it to date then we can later on return um our thread messages Right, so we need to pass in all these fields. So the ID will actually be coming from our doc.id. And also the sender name will be coming from our message data. Then we assert the sender. <coughs> the profile image URL is going to be constant as well. We will deal with that. Um, and also the messages over here is going to be from our message data. Then I set the message field. Then we pass in the timestamp. So we need to convert this to a list. Since the return type is going to be a list of thread messages. So look through our collection, filter where um the sender is go to the full name. And also return our thread message passing in the sender name and all those information. So the first tab view is going to return our threads, right? so in here we'll be returning our stream builder that is in the stream and also the builder so the builder as usual is basically a function that is in the context and also the snapshot so the snapshot is what actually holds the data and returns a widget so the stream is going to listen to a function that's going to be from our user fetch user trace function right so it's not going to be of future it's going to be of stream as course in there function mark is in must have oh my, let's get rid of the async over here and saving the changes so let's get rid of the cons it's not going to be constant anymore so within our builder we are going to return first of all um let's check for the state of the snapshot if snapshot dot has data that's when we get our data back right can just create 
a variable known as the user thread and assign the snapshot of data to a user thread. Then we can proceed to return a list view builder, right? That comes with the item builder. That's also a, a function that takes in the context and also the index. So with the item builder, it also takes in the item count. That's going to be from a user thread dot length, the length of a user thread. And also within the item builder, we'll be returning. Um, first of all, let's grab the message data over here. And that's going to be from a user thread, then we pass in our index. All right, we look through and pass in our index. And also, be assessing create sorry be creating an instance of our message over here right so that comes with the id we pass in our message data dot id and also the sender name do something similar over there this profile picture is going to be message data dots and also the message is going to be message data dot message then Pass in a message data dot timestamp as well. I think that's pretty much it. So we need to return it, um the trade message widget, right? So you can just pass in the message. There you go. So this when our snapshot has data, right? So let's check for the other state. If it has error, we need to display something else. So else if our snapshot dot has error. Can actually return um the error. So the default case is going to return a circular progress indicator if it does if you don't have our data back and if you are not having an error, meaning it's in progress, right? So we can just return our circular progress indicator over here. I think that's pretty much it. The body might complete normally. So let's get rid of the else over here. There we go. Let's see if any changes. So let's fetch our user data, right? We did not in a state method. And so let's proceed to update the username and also the user field, right? So the username is going to be a username and also actually it's supposed to be a username and the first one is supposed to be a def the full name. There you go, as you can see, you can see the thread post message related to that particular user. How interesting is that? So that's pretty much it. See you in our next tutorial. Until then, stay tuned.